Well, uh, welcome to the show. Please remember these words uh, from uh, Romans uh, uh, chapter 1 and verse 17. For then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Uh, welcome to this program and welcome to another day of getting into the word so that we can be uh, stirred up by the word. Today is a special work, uh, uh, program, Faith to Change Your World, and we have a special guest all the way from United States, Virginia in particular, and he will share with us. But before I bring him on the, on the, on the scene, let me just quote a scripture, and we're reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19 to 20, and the Bible says, Go ye therefore, and teach the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, and even unto the end of the world. This was Jesus speaking to us, and today uh, we want to speak on, on the Great Commission. What does it mean to the church? Well, I want to welcome with me Pastor Jason. Um, welcome to the program and welcome to Zambia. Yes, thank you very much. It's good to be here. My second time in Zambia and I'm thankful to, to be here and, and serving alongside some wonderful people. Awesome. It's good to have you. We are talking about the Great Commission. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ and um, it's one of the commands that God has given to the body of Christ mm -hmm. to execute on the face of the earth. And um, uh, God does not... or or rather Jesus Christ has not given us this to be a suggestion it's a command yes your views yes not a suggestion yeah. this is uh, when Jesus taught his disciples to disciple the nations uh, he wasn't giving them a recommendation yeah. they, maybe they should do it maybe they mm. shouldn't uh, this was a command from God a command from the heavenly throne room yeah uh, whereas God has issued uh, to the disciples and thus to us the command to go forth into the world to make more disciples yes people who are baptized mm -hmm. and, and most importantly because i think this gets left out a lot teaching them to obey everything mm -hmm. uh, so awesome. some translations say to observe but the point is is that we are to obey god and his law mm -hmm. and his commands and so no it's not a suggestion at all mm -hmm. well that, that's awesome because this the church has to obey this to go out and pray. We, we, there is a, so many dimensions there. There is, a, there is another scripture. The Bible does tell us that there will be miracles following and all kinds of things. But the greatest miracle mm -hmm. is when someone turns from darkness to light. Yes, from evil to righteousness. Mm -hmm. So tell tell me, uh, maybe somebody out there wants to know the church must uphold this as a prime thing secondary to these physical miracles we have to focus because it's possible that you you can have your healings and all all kinds of things but you need to get your soul in line with god saved you yes. need to accept jesus as your personal self i just want you to elaborate more on that in terms of you know uh penetrating the light of the gospel into the world what does it really mean yes well, that's a really good observation because if you notice in the Great Commission, it doesn't say to make converts, mm. but we believe in that. We mm. believe that the gospel is to be preached, to, to be set loose in the world. Um, we are preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. So we are not um, preaching get to heaven when you die only. Mm. We want people to go to heaven. We, we believe in heaven. Mm. We mm. believe that Jesus is remaking the world. The new heavens and new earth will become a reality at some point in the future once Jesus has put all his enemies under his feet. That's 1 Corinthians 15. Um, but the whole point of it is the preaching of the kingdom of God. And once the preaching of the kingdom of God happens, then those things like the signs and miracles will follow as the Holy Spirit works and moves mm. in the lives of the people mm. of God. Mm. Mm. So it is, it, it ought to be the first and foremost thing on our minds 
when we are living our lives, mm-hmm. when we're going to work, when we are serving our neighbor, when we're in church on Sunday, those types of things. Mm-hmm. Um, that gospel, that good news, right? It means good news. Mm-hmm. It's good news because it's the arrival of the kingdom of God in history mm-hmm. through Jesus Christ and yeah. his and his what he has done for us mm. and what he has um, going to do through us as we mm. follow him. Yes, because they, there is a temptation. I, I like the way you've put it. There is a temptation of us uh, putting the salvation of souls to be secondary mm. as opposed to be our prime goal. While we are believing God for these miracles taking place and while we are believing God for fellowship, but the, the issue is, where does, you know, the, you say preach the kingdom of God. Now, there is a way that the church can grow in terms of numerically. Yes. And sometimes you have somebody come from another church, join the other church, and you can't stop that. Yeah. But that just means somebody has, is chewing the kingdom has just moved right. from one church to another. But where does we really, the back stops with the church where we really not go to, we need to go to the bottom line and see drunkards get sober, yeah. prostitutes will come and get Jesus Christ and stop their profession. You know, that kind of thing that we really need to come back to the real. Yes. Because when I was growing up, all of us wanted to be an evangelist. These days, everybody wants to be a prophet and there's nothing wrong with that because there's prophetic dimension has got its part. Right. But we cannot lose the focus of getting people back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. I think you pointed out a really important thing and hopefully our viewers and listeners will be able to to kind of identify the issue here. But in, in a lot of ways, what, what we have done, and this is the case in my country as well, but a lot of times we have put the activities of the church ahead of the kingdom of God because it's the kingdom of God that gives birth to the church, mm-hmm. right? I mean, Jesus comes in the book of Mark and he says, uh, repent and you know, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe this gospel. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when the kingdom comes, what comes with it are hearts and souls that are transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we wanna preach the kingdom first and foremost. And then out of that, we have our church activities. We have the things that we do on Sunday when we praise and we pray and we preach and we teach, um, when we serve the orphan, when we serve the widow, those things all come out of a kingdom focus. Mm. So I think that that's the big difference. Um, when we The church's point is not to serve the church as an end in itself. It's to serve the kingdom of God. Mm. And that's the big difference I, I think we need to emphasize mm. is that we are called in the Great Commission to teach the nations, to teach people how to obey Christ. And that applies to every single area of life, whether it's business or education or politics. Yeah. Yeah. All of those issues are to be brought underneath the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Dominion mandate. So the Dominion mandate. That's The Great Commission is actually tied to the dominion mandate to be Mm. fruitful to be multiply Mm. and and jesus didn't just make it up you know one day he Mm. he believed in the dominion mandate and his calling Mm. as as the lord was Mm. to usher in the kingdom of god and Mm. bring people into that so that the glory of god could as habakkuk says cover the knowledge the knowledge of the lord will cover the earth as the Mm. waters cover the sea yeah and i I think that is a key component that we Mm. oftentimes forget in the great commission well, you know, sometimes you, like you've rightly said, Jesus Christ made a stunning statement. Mm-hmm. He says, the Son of Man have come to seek that which was lost. Yes. That, that statement is really an awesome statement. What, what would you uh, elaborate or if we click it in the spirit and break it forth to see, you know, it's, it's, it's Jesus did not come for the righteous. He came for the unrighteous to make them righteous. Yeah. Because the one who's sick is the one who seeks for the physician. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and we see that when Jesus came and had a fellowship and dinner with uh, Zacchaeus, who was a tax collector, and everybody in the society knew him as a sinner yeah. because the guy was stealing uh, through his tax collecting under Julius Caesar. And, and Jesus said, today salvation has come to your home. And Jesus went to eat with him. 
and the religious folks of the day condemn Jesus and give him a nickname and say he's a friend of sinners. Yeah. And and, and eventually Zacchaeus got saved. Yeah. Well, that's I think that's the the church has we need to go that way to try and bring the sinners back to to the local church. Otherwise we get satisfied in our fellowship. Yes. And we stop making altar calls for people to get saved. We, we're no longer excited. We're just excited of a message and we, we're eating it. But we need sinners to get saved. We need to come back to... And Jesus was moved with compassion. Yeah. How do we come back to the Jesus style? Yeah. Where say, I came to seek that which was lost. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's why the kingdom first movement and what we can call it that it needs to be a kingdom first movement mm. uh, comes to fruition because when we have people who are um, focused on the rule and reign of Christ in every area of life then we don't have time for developing uh, church-centered activities where it's only like you said only getting together mm. only you know doing those things um, we want people to be set free to serve Jesus Christ and his gospel mm. and his law word. Uh, and the way that's done is by reminding people who they are in Christ. You are free in Jesus Christ. You have been brought, as you said earlier, out of darkness into light. Mm -hmm. And being brought out of darkness into light means that you are now in the light, carrying forth that light into darkness again. Mm. So that's, I think that's what we miss, even in my country, and you know, and, and even in Zambia, in a lot of places, the American church has unfortunately found itself in in a little bit of a predicament because we have reordered things in the way Jesus never intended. And you brought up Zacchaeus. Mm. You know his story. You know he he becomes a believer. God changes his life. And what does he do? Well, he restitution. He, restitution. That's yeah. that's biblical law. And, and so I think that looks like a lot of things for various people where we focus on the kingdom and things change. Mm. Um, and we go into the places that are hard, the mm. difficult places, mm. uh, to teach people how to obey Christ. Mm. Wonderful. That's, I think that's a powerful revelation. We're going to take a break and when we come back, we're going to look at three dimensions. The lost coin, the lost ship, and the lost son. We take a break now. I'm well Welcome back, Faith to Change the World, and we are talking about the Great Commission. Once again, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now, we are looking at the Great Commission. Jesus Christ gave us a three-dimensional uh, of things that were lost, or situations where we had lost things. Number one, we had the lost coin. The lost coin was lost within the house. Then the Bible talks about the lost ship, and we have to leave the 99 and go after the one ship. And then talk, Jesus talks about the lost son. The lost son, or the prodigal son, as most theologians have um, uh, named him, he had to make a choice by himself to come back. The lost coin. How, uh, the lost coin, the lost ship. I just want us to expand on that, and then we'll, we'll get back to... Yeah, the light of uh, of how we do it. Well, I think what's notable in those parables is that these these people are determined 
right? They're very determined to find what was lost. Mm -hmm. So there's an element to the Great Commission where, uh, like Jesus, we must be determined people mm -hmm. who are expending our energy on things that matters, mm -hmm. right? Things that matter. Um, not not that we shouldn't go to, to our jobs and do a good job and work for the Lord. That's mm -hmm. what we're called to do. Um, but part of the maturity of growing and um, and being faithful to the kingdom is is being determined mm. and being resolute on pursuing the kingdom of God mm. and pursuing people who are lost, mm. people who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, or people who are in the church mm. who have fallen away, who have uh, let the cares of the world um, strangle them, to choke mm. them out, like the parable of the sower. Mm. So we need to be resolute, for sure, in those parables, I think, demonstrate why. I, 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 you, you hit the nail right on its head, because when you look at the lost coin, the lost coin was lost within the within the house, within yeah. the church. Yes, we, we are folks that need to be reached, who are in pain, who are in, you know, they're, 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 they're in the church, but they're not available, because the lost coin means that, you know, it's there, but it can be used. You know, so you have to push around and find it. With the lost coin, you have to leave and go after. Yes. With the lost son, he has to make a decision by himself, his backslidden state. He has to come back to the Lord. But what is so touching is that the father is expecting him to come back for the love inside mm -hmm. there. Yeah. And the problem is, in that parable, or in that story, is the elder brother's attitude. Uh, yeah. Because you're already in church, you're growing up in church, and a new person comes and seems to be, you know, sensitive to what God is doing and is growing up. And those people who were in the church for a long time begin to be threatened yeah. by this guy who's just coming up. And those things hinder the growth, uh, past the growth of the church to the growth of the kingdom of God. Yeah. And the parable of the lost son, too, is really also Jesus tells the story um, because in a lot of ways, Israel at that moment, especially the scribes and the Pharisees, they were like the older brother who mm. had a problem yeah. with Jesus bringing others into the kingdom. Yeah. The Gentiles, those yeah. who were the least of these, those who were tax collectors. And and, and, and so we, we, we ought not to despise those who God is bringing along and saving. We need to praise God for rescuing sinners, not be jealous or envious, uh, and, and certainly not being like the older brother was. Like mm. the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who Jesus excoriated often, he had many times rebuked them mm. for their attitude in terms of, of the kingdom of God, and they believed they were the center of the kingdom of God, when in fact they were not. Awesome, awesome stuff. That's why the Bible says, unless your righteousness uh, exceeds that exceeds. of the Pharisees and the scribes, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's it. Uh, let's come to, to the scripture that we quoted earlier, um, that is making disciples. Here is somebody who has come to the Lord Jesus. He's a sinner, he comes, you pray for them, you teach Jesus to them, they accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior, they are converted. Mm -hmm. What next? Well, what next is the development of the gospel and the word of God in their lives. What we, what we want to see happen are people who are so enthralled with their Lord that they are growing and maturing. And I think, I, I'm, I'll, I'll, I think this has been the problem in my country, and, and it may mm. be the same here. But the problem is, in a lot of ways, we are settling for the milk of the word when we should be after the meat of the word. Mm. Mm. And we have set the bar so low at times that people, uh, they don't think that there's more to do uh, they, it's just sort of you know get saved go to church you're baptized mm. you know give of your tithes and these are all things we want right they're good things but what we need is for people to discover to discover the individual purpose in the kingdom of god mm. and everyone has a purpose if you are a member of the zambian government you have a purpose to serve god in that moment mm. if you are uh, someone who drives a taxi you need to drive a taxi for the glory of God. Mm. Uh, and so all of this, we need individual purpose in the kingdom of God. We need mm. people to mature, mm. to grow, mm. so they're not tossed around, mm. as the book of Ephesians tells us. Um, we need the church to focus on discipleship, mm. bringing people along, growing them in the knowledge of the word. Mm. Uh, that's the teaching, teaching nations to obey mm all that Christ has commanded, mm. that, that's a key aspect that we just, we just simply miss. Mm. We think if people are sitting in our chairs and, 
and jumping around praising God and th that we've been successful. Look, the, the gauge for success is not numbers, it's faithfulness. Mm. It's maturity. It's moving past the milk and going for the meat of the word, which mm. you know Hebrews 4 and 5 and 6 talks quite a bit about that, uh, where we have the, the milk of the word is really the simple stuff of the gospel, mm. the resurrection, baptism. Mm. That's what he says. Mm. The meat of the word is applying the word of God to every area of mm. life, especially as we interact with each other in society, being people of honor, right? Faith to change your world. Well, we should change the world. Mm. And that includes political endeavors, mm. social endeavors, mm. uh, feeding the poor, um, how you do... Uh, money, private property, mm. um, those things are the meat of the word. And it's mm. the meat because it's applying with mature people, uh, people of self-control, right? That's one of the fruits of the spirit. Mm. Self-control, love and joy and peace. And, you know, it's applying those things, um, not just in thinking about them. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's wonderful because the Bible here, verse 20 of Matthew 20, of chapter 28 says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you and lo I'm with you and, and Jesus has given us a promise there yeah that you always be with us you always work with us you always be with us in the vineyard and I think we need to come back uh, to teaching people to observe after they accept Christ as their personal Savior that means a systematic Bible study mm -hmm. Pastor Jensen yeah we need to have, create an, um, an environment or a deliberate Bible study, yeah. a systematic, well-structured Bible study. People need to know what faith is. People need to know what baptism of water is. People need to know all those things. Yeah. And and what do you say on the baptism in, in, in terms of uh, not just baptism, but faith and all these elementary doctrines that people need to hear? Yeah. You know, the, 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 the teachings. They're the building blocks. You know, it, it's um, I, one pastor had said in America, you know, the gospel isn't the ABCs, it's the A through Z. So the whole thing is the gospel, Yeah. but each letter is a building block to, yeah. per, to, to create words and yes. to communicate. And it's that, it's that idea of taking the, the theology of the Bible, the doctrines that God has given us in his word and doing something with them. Uh, awesome. The Old Testament, far too many people in my country, they do not know the Old Testament. Mm. It's like, you know, the God of the Old Testament, he was just angry and upset. And then Jesus came to, you know, help fix things. Mm. No, no, no. This is the same God at work through God's covenant people f for the glory of God in the earth. Uh, so I, I think that's one aspect of, of training people into maturity is understanding mm. some things that they've never really delved into. Mm. Um, and, and again, that takes work takes mm. effort mm. Uh, you have to want to know the bible you have to actually pick it up read it study to show yourself study approved it. exactly a workman that needeth not to be ashamed yeah uh, paul says do not be conformed to this world uh, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of god yes. so th there's got to be some you know effort mm -hmm. in how we teach the word of god otherwise we're not we are going to be in trouble when it comes to yeah. uh, being tossed to and from by every wind of doctrine if people are not maturing in the things of god if people are not maturing in the scripture any wind that comes up they will go for it yeah and think about this you just while you were talking it came to mind psalm chapter 42 as a deer longs for flowing streams mm. so my soul longs for you O god I don't know how many Christians who can genuinely say that they, like a deer looking for water, mm, thirsty. so I long for you. That's a quite a description. It's, a, it's an amazing description because you, viewers, you should be longing for God. Your, what does Jesus say? What, are, what should you hunger and thirst for? Mm. Money? Mm. Right? Mm. No, he didn't say money. Should you be hungering, uh, hungry and thirsty uh, for popularity or fame? Uh, uh, to grow your business so you can have more money to spend on things you don't really need anyway to try to impress people that you know you shouldn't be worried about uh, you know he said to hunger and thirst for righteousness hungering and thirsting Thirsty for, for righteousness. righteousness if you're hungry for food 
what do you do? You see to it that you find food. Mm. It, it drives you. Mm. Righteousness and justice should drive us. Mm. That should be the motivating factor of why we get out of bed every single day. We should long for the glory of God. I think that's so humbling, um, you know, as the deer punt, punts after the water, so my soul punteth after God. Yeah. Uh, Paul said it in another way. He said, oh, that I may know him. Yeah and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship with his suffering. I want to know Christ. So there must be a desire, a hunger. And our prayer really is that God must give us a hunger for more of his word. Yes. God must give us a hunger for more of him. God must give us a hunger for his presence. We need more of him. Yeah. Uh, and less of us. John the Baptist say that I may decrease and that he may increase in us. Mm -hmm. So we need him to increase in us. And, you know, that can only come through the knowledge and the revelation of God's word. That yeah. was what will bring the, the restoration, the reformation. That's what will bring for us to now go after the sinners. Because I have the good thing in the inside of me. Yeah. And we need more people to come into the kingdom. You know. Yeah. And I, I, you made me think of something, Bishop. I, I think that part of the issue here is that we have an unhealthy view of Christianity where we think it's sort of this magical mm. experience. Mm. And so if I'm not feeling the magical experience, then I must not be... It's sensational. Yeah, yeah. It's very yeah. sensational. And the reality is, it's really not that difficult. And here's why. You know, Paul says, to, he appeals to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice. Mm. Well, some days you don't feel like doing that. Mm. Uh, but the reality is... The, the the motivating factor to getting you to where you need to be in terms of obedience to Christ, exhibiting self-control and patience with others, the motivating factor ought to be Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But the you know, someone might say, Well, how do I get there? I don't I, I feel like I love Jesus today, but I'm not I, you know, I'm not sure. And here's what I would say. Your job is always to repent of your self sufficiency. Mm -hmm. Because what is the reason that people do not pray or feel motivated to pray? Mm, mm. Well, because they think that they're quite capable of handling, you know, the sovereignty of God <laughs> for him. Uh, so there's no brokenness. Yeah, there's a brokenness that has to be. Mm. There's a, an acknowledgement that I, I do not have the capability to handle this situation on my own. I must go to God mm. because the deer is panting panting yeah there's a there's a hunger there's a, hunger. There's a thirsty uh, in the in the inside of us I, I think for us to achieve uh, and execute God's purposes in the earth for us to go out in in such a way that we bring this great commission to reality there's got to be a hunger for God in the inside of us mm -hmm. a genuine hunger for God so I'm gonna ask you to pray um, for all of us yes I'll ask you to pray for those that are watching for all of us that God may help us by his grace to give us a hunger a genuine hunger for for the word a thirsty for his word like Paul says once again that I may know him yes and the power of his resurrection he raised the dead he preached the gospel he still said that all that I may know him yeah all that I may know him yes for from him and to him are all things we, precisely yes. so I would like you to okay. just pray for those that are watching pray for all of us that in the midst of all these worldly things that are taking place the confusion that's taking place in the world the unsatisfactory things uh, God will release upon our lives upon our city Lusaka and upon our country mm -hmm. a, 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 a hunger for God a thirsty for his, a genuine thirsty for his word okay because we gotta have to start from there mm -hmm. then we can to go to prayer then we can go to evangelism then we can go to church growth yes so would you do yes, that yes absolutely so let's just pray together yes mm -hmm. uh, heavenly father we pray in jesus name by the power of your spirit we ask god that you would pour out your spirit in lusaka and zambia mm -hmm. in my country in, in mm -hmm. the united states thank you Lord may jesus. you raise up a church that is faithful to your word mm -hmm. faithful to the great commission god we want to long for righteousness 
um, so that it will exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Mm, mm. So I ask and pray in Jesus' name that you would help us, give us guidance, give us knowledge of your word, help us to grow and mature and be godly men and women and children who are serving your kingdom first and foremost. And I ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you so much. Well, viewers, there you have it. Um, there's a number on your screen if you want to get in touch with us. There's somebody who's waiting on the line to pray with you, to do counseling. If you have a question, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. We thank you, uh, Pastor Jason. Once again, you're welcome in Zambia. And thank you for the word. Yes. And uh, as we go, please, please don't forget these words from Romans chapter 10, verse 17. For uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God bless you. We'll see you soon. But keep in touch. Oh.